Hey guys, and welcome back for another episode of the Social Hour podcast, a podcast for sewists by sewists. I'm your host, Ashley. And I'm Bethany. And today we have a wonderful guest joining us. Her name is also Ashley. So we have two Ashleys, not to be too confusing today, but <laughs> Ashley is, I'm so excited to have you here. Um, yeah. she, you can follow her over on um, Instagram. So I'm going to let her share a little bit about herself and how you can follow her. And of course, we'll put that all in the description below, but welcome Ashley to our podcast. Yes, welcome. Thank you. I felt like it was a fluke. I was like, ah, they don't really want me. <laughs> <laughs> of course we do. <clears throat> um, so so tell- I guess I'm a mom of four. Yeah. It's a lot. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> that's so a crazy. lot. One of them was planned. Uh, so if that tells you anything <laughs> about my life choices. <laughs> uh, they're all great. Glad they're here. Uh, and I started sewing. It's been almost 10 years. Um, I was self-taught by YouTube Wonderful. And I was pregnant with my second and we had been stationed in Hawaii. My husband was in the army. And oh. so we only had one car though. And so he would take it to work. So then I was stuck in the apartment with my three-year-old and I'm pregnant. So I was bored and needed something. <laughs> so I was like, well, I'll just get a sewing machine. So I went to Walmart. I got the basic brother you know, that they just offer. And I started with work clubs and then it just kind of spiraled from there. I did quilting first and then I ended up making like baby leggings and then, you know, the tumble into everything else. So, and then now now I'm here. (laughs) And now how can people follow you on Instagram? What's your handle? Um, oh gosh, it's so like sewing underscore shilly awkward. With so it's dot. socially awkward. It's hard to say. I didn't plan this right. <laughs> It'll well, be we'll have that handle. Link in, we'll have that link it will in be. the uh, description box. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I love your handle. It was one of the things that stood out to me when I first got connected with you on Instagram. And then I started looking at your page and I was like, this girl is like a whole vibe and I love her. <laughs> and I just like instantly was like drawn to like follow your, your account. And it's like the first like story that pops up every day and I love it. So um, we're so excited to have you. And, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to have you come on before Hall- like right before Halloween is you love Halloween. And you love all things spooky. You're very <laughs> open about that, but you do make some of the cutest stuff Aww. this time of year. And I feel like you're in your element right now. It's my and own. So <laughs> it is. It is. And, if, and for those who are listening to the podcast and not watching this episode on YouTube, she'd even decorated her background with little bats and everything because it's just, she's on well, the Most thing. of that is all year round. I just added the bats, but it's <laughs> Halloween decor stays up all year long. I've got... Like, I like oddities and, like, collecting things like that, too. So it all just kind of morphs together. But spooky season is my jam. It is. It is your jam. And I love that. And you make some really, really cute stuff for your kids. Well, I and I know. Invested in it emotionally, like, it's easier, you know, because it's like, yeah. I don't have to overthink it. It's like, I just mm-hmm. want to make all the things. <laughs> Do you find that, like, you are the one in your family that really loves Halloween and like the season more than anybody else? Or is everybody like on board with that? Oh no. I, well, I'm the weirdo. Like I'm definitely <laughs> the weirdo. I'm the black sheep. Uh, always have been, but my dad really does like Halloween also. And he's kind of, I think where I got it from. Mm-hmm. Cause like when I would go with visitation with him, you know, he would sneak horror movies for me to watch and stuff when my mom, <laughs> he knew wouldn't let me. So it would be like Friday the 13th and you know, we'd have to tell me to cover my eyes during most of it. Uh, <laughs> but so it started with him, I think. And so yeah. it's probably like a nostalgia connection there, you know, but mm-hmm. um, I've just always liked weird things or things that people normally think are creepy. Like we have tarantulas, we have a snake, like, I just That's, like, yeah. I told Ashley, I told <laughs> Ashley, you recently got a tarantula and she's like, but like a real one. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, we I, I asked if you had a jumping spider because I saw those and those were actually kind of cute. So cute. They like, don't live tarantula. very long though. And that's the only reason why I mm. haven't gotten one yet is because I'll cry. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so How long cute. does the tarantula live for? Uh, well, it just depends like um, on the species you like, breed or whatever. And then male or female. The males normally die a lot earlier than the females. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I'll let you have all that. (laughs) And you have a snake. What kind of snake do you have? 
Oh, I don't know. That's my husband's. I think it's a ball python. Oh, okay. We just got oh, okay. that one. She's really cute. Those ones aren't the meanest ones. Those are no. Pretty, they're actually yeah. pretty docile, especially if you start handling them like when they're babies. Mm-hmm. And she's pretty mm-hmm. little. I'm pretty oh. sure if my son listens to this podcast, which I don't know if a teenager teenage boy <laughs> would, but he probably would listen to this one because he would love to have a pet snake. And I told oh, him he could. The day he moves out of my house. Oh, because I just can't. I just can't. So when we go to the zoo, there's here at the Nashville Zoo there, which I think we're going to go to this afternoon because it's so pretty and it's his fall break. We've done nothing fun this week. So I'm like, let's let's go. But he loves the reptile building. Mm-hmm. Like you go into the reptile building. I mm-hmm. I am more of a just follow him and don't get up close to the glass of anything in there (laughs) or I just wait outside and let him do his lap through the building because it's just, it just makes, it makes me not, (laughs) I just don't like it. Um, And I think the last time we were there, there was like a sign, like the the spider wasn't in Mm -hmm. the thing. And it was like, where is it? Something was weird taped (laughs) to it. And I was like, I feel like there's a spider is like roaming this building. I am out of here. And I did not feel comfortable. So, but it's just not everybody's cup of tea. But my yeah. son, he would probably come live with you in <laughs> to be able to like live with snakes and tarantulas and all that kind of stuff. Cause it's, he loves that stuff. Well, it's so. hard. Like I'll handle the snake a little bit. Like I'm still a little hesitant just because I know that animals are at their core animals and they're unpredictable. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I don't really feel like being bit today. And living in Arizona, <laughs> there's all kinds of sharp things that want to kill you anyways, like scorpions and like, you know, so yeah, I have an appreciation for them more so when they're in their tank. Yeah. Uh, Cause like they tried to get me to hold the tarantula at the reptile show before I bought it. And I was like, no, I'll just take it. It's fine. <laughs> Cause it was, oh, wow. Fast. They're so fast. And I didn't want it to like oh. go on the floor and get stomped or something. <laughs> <laughs> How do your kids feel about all, all having all of these different like animals They're in your unfazed. home? They love it. My daughter was the yeah. first to hold the snake. They're crazy. really <laughs> They're more cutthroat than no I. Fear. But you you're on Instagram, but you're also on TikTok, right? Yes, and it's the same handle just over on TikTok. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um so we would love to talk more about your sewing history and of course where it all began. You said that you were doing the the kids stuff for cloth mm-hmm. and thing like that but um how did you get into quilting well that was like one of the first things because i just felt like straight lines would be easier <laughs> not so <laughs> That's much good, yeah you, you would think it would be uh uh-huh. but so i was just like making my daughter a quilt and like making little things and it was just easier and especially in hawaii there's not like a huge fabric source so I yeah how do you that. how did you navigate that because just Walmart was like, like basic uh-huh. cotton woven. And then every once in a while I would order out, but it was really rare because it was so expensive for the shipping. Mm-hmm. So once I got back stateside, it went, you know, it was a lot better because I had a lot more at my disposal. And then my husband had gotten a really good job overseas contracting. So then I was home alone and I was like, hmm, he's not here to see all the boxes come. So <laughs> that's why I have a lot of the hoard that I do have was for that pretty good year because he would be gone for three months at a time and uh, i just went ham uh <laughs> it's a lot but i love totally it totally whittling down not that i'm ever not buying more but i mean if there's an apocalypse i can clothe a lot of people or use these as blankets you know the toilet i'm the same crisis, way i was like listen yeah the toilet was- paper crisis yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was the same thing i said to all my family i'm like I can make you rolls of toilet paper if you want. And they're like, no, don't even, don't say it. They're like, don't even say it. Some people do. Yeah. They make, there are people that make their own toilet paper. (laughs) And like no judgment, but that's just, I could never like, yeah. I would forget. And then, and then it would go into the system and then probably break my pipes. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Now that you're done, well, you you don't do quilting as much, so you're more into the garment making mm-hmm. side of sewing. So That's what a kind big of transition. Do you use for your garment sewing? What was that? You have some machines behind you. What oh, machines do you? I've got yeah, I've got four machines because oh, four. I'm garbage and I don't like to change my serger thread. So I was like, I need a black and a white. Because ah, that's a good a good thing to do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've got my cover stitch, my two sergers, and then my regular sewing machine. So you did bring 
I asked you to bring some things to do a little show and tell, which I know is so fun. And we had so much good feedback from the last time we did that. So um, I think you brought some things to show us that you've made um, specifically, I think, for your kids and Halloween stuff. So can you show us those and kind of tell us a little bit about them? Well, I'll start with my most recent little things. It's so much fun to sew for babies. Like that was the first thing I thought of when I found out I was pregnant again. I was like, oh, I can make all the baby things again because they're small. They don't take a lot of time. Uh, and so then for my son journey, I just made him a couple rompers. I love this so just much. Little sweater rompers. So the little jack-o'-lantern, which that was actually, and I, love, I thought that I love it. that it's got like an oversized fit on him. Mm -hmm. So it kind of keeps that shape of a little pumpkin. And he <laughs> yes. is so cute in that. <laughs> well, and he's so little. cute. He still fits in like six to nine he's tiny. months and he's 14. Oh, wow. oh, he's just dinky. And then this uh, one, I love. I top stitched yeah, I love that. It's just felt on this belt oh, fabric, okay. which, speaking of Olga, these are Olga fabrics. Um, yes. And then this one has yeah. a hood, so I just wanted it to be a little bit different. I don't know if, I don't know. I think how was doing the top extra. stitching? Did, was that, it how was that on that. green? Yeah. I used the heat bond stuff, so ah, it was adhesive on both sides, because otherwise it would have moved too much, especially with this kind of fabric. It shifts a lot. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so you basically applicate that on. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Which I hadn't done in so long that I had to like completely re-register my scan and cut. So that took me like 45 minutes alone. <laughs> I had to recreate a new login and like, it was crazy, but it, it was worth it. Um, and then <laughs> a couple years ago I had made my two daughters and my niece, uh, Sanderson sister costumes. Hocus Pocus, I watch it so much. My kids almost hate the movie now because they're like, oh, again, I'm like, I guess, <laughs> stop. Yes. Uh, but yes. they were down for it. So, and my uh, niece, she's like more of a redhead. So it was just kismet. I'm like, this just needs yeah. to happen. Yeah. And so this is her dress. This was oh, my frids and I did a uh, damp. The cape and everything. That. And it's just a velvet cape. And then here was her dress. And the thing that is so cool about sewing too is literally all three of these dresses look so different, but they're all the same pattern. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, did you use a pattern so or? Yeah, it was um, Little Lizard King. I don't remember the name of it because, you know, yeah. again, it's been like two years since I made them. But um, so that's the Winifred dress. Oh, so cute. Her cape mm -hmm. was like the most special because it needed to be. And then oh, yeah. and this one would have been Mary, I believe. So it's just like this maroon cape. And then I just changed the so, bodice, like what I attached onto it, changed the whole I love it. And then I just if have you're listening to this, you need to come over to YouTube to actually be able to appreciate these costumes. <laughs> they are so cute and intricate they too. Are. I had so much. Well, and that's what I said. Like if you're invested in it emotionally, it's so much easier to do the extra work. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then this would have been Sarah. Oh. And this had like I love that bodice satin. too. I did a decorative stitch. I think that's like the first and only time I've ever done it. Oh, <laughs> I love it. But and then she's got that's little bags here. So yeah, yeah. But they that's the thing about making costumes test. though. It make, yeah. it forces you to do those things that you know, would normally do. Right, the extra effort. Mm -hmm. And they I won a Halloween contest wearing yeah, that. It was unfortunate because it was during COVID, so oh. um, we didn't get to do the in person contest that we do every year. Um, at our mm -hmm. local park so you just submitted photos that year and then they ended up contacting me and they were like we're so sorry we forgot to announce that you actually won and they gave us a gift certificate for a local sewing shop so that oh, was that's really cool was really fun <laughs> oh that's so and now of course I'm sure they've all outgrown they have and they're super bummed because like I pulled them out and they're like can we put them back on and I'm like uh it was two years ago <laughs> they're not gonna fit but, no, I can't get but you can't get no, no, absolutely not. I want to put them in you chat cannot. boxes and hang them up like in the hallway or something. Because yeah. I love oh. it. And it fits my decor anyways. So <laughs> <laughs> I will so say hard. you recently made a shacket from, mm -hmm. I think, was it Pete Petite Stitchery's yes. it was pattern? Like Mona, I think. Yes. And so as soon as I saw that picture of your shacket, I was like, I, ha I have to make this. I haven't made it yet, but I have the pattern um, and I have the fabric. I'm just deciding if I want to do like a Sherpa or anything on the inside to like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, like make it thicker, like make it more of a jacket than just mm -hmm. a button up. Such 
corduroy that I want to make into one as well. But I'm so also that's what mine in, is. like, do I put mm-hmm. something on the inside? Because I would, I'm a cold person, so I would prefer to have something on the inside. It's a lot colder where you're at too, Ashley. Yeah, than, yeah that's right. Where... <laughs> say, I'm in Arizona, so I'm like as thin as possible. <laughs> and yeah, I get, I like get like brief degrees, moments though. of each season, but mm-hmm. she gets a, she gets full winter up in Canada. So um but yeah no i got this like uh it's from hobby lobby actually Uh it's a green like sage green corduroy that is leopard (laughs) with like a slightly darker green is the leopard print and so i thought oh this would be perfect for a fun little fall jacket i love the green color and then i thought about getting some sort of like cream tones i don't know something fuzzy and warm and i'll either put it on the inside or i'll just line the bodice with it Uh i haven't quite decided yet did you size up in that pattern? No. No? It's, it's an oversized? oversized. Yeah. Oh, that's good. But that's what I like because then you can put a hoodie underneath it if you want to. Yeah. I like that look mm-hmm. too. Like a hoodie. Yeah, I like an pack. oversized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's, so I'm excited to make that. Yeah. It's just on yeah. my to-do list, hopefully sooner than later. Um, but yeah, I love, I do get a lot of inspiration from the stuff that you make because mm-hmm. I feel like you choose like fabrics that you don't, like, and Ashley and Ashley and I were talking about this the other day. It's like you you choose fabric sometimes that I kind of skip over mm-hmm. yes. because I'm like, oh, I don't I don't get inspired by that. But then I see you make it into something, and I'm like, well, now I want that fabric mm-hmm. because like I'm inspired. Fabric? Not that moth fabric was so beautiful, but I totally would have just been like me <laughs> when you made it into that beautiful cardigan. I'm just like, okay, I want the fabric now. <laughs> right? No, that's what's hard though too because that's where it's hard to rein it in. Because I yeah. see yeah. all this, you know, I love following other sewists and it's like mm-hmm. at the same time, I'm like, oh no, I need to stop because now I want everything <laughs> and I already have so much, you know? And I well, and you recently, thing. you recently made, um, cause Olga's closet, speaking of Olga, we were, you're also a brand ambassador with Olga right. and she, it does a lot of fall mm-hmm. and not just like fall, but like Halloween, kid spooky, more more like more actual spooky stuff she kind of has a big range and i know this is you've taken full advantage oh yeah of the season. All of it. <laughs> uh, but you made like a matching set for you and your husband mm-hmm. uh so tell us a little bit about that and because the fabric i again this is another fabric where i was like what, what would i make with that and then you made something with that i'm like well that makes sense mm-hmm. like this just is so cute well, I love the fabric, but I realized it was probably a little bit too macabre for a lot of people. So I was like, well, I'll just make like a sleep set for me and then matching underwear for him. And he's so down, like he's super supportive. And especially if he sees me actually sewing fabric, he's like, good. That's another one that is not sitting in a pile. So <laughs> he's always down. And I just thought it would be really fun. And they always photograph really well. I really like mm-hmm. uh, sleepwear. And I actually, because there's things that you make, but you don't necessarily wear or reach for. But those sleep sets are so comfortable because that rib knit is so soft. And yeah, you know, like, it's I'm going to plug Olga here. It's just so soft and it's breathable. Like, but really, <laughs> yeah. you know, I don't feel like I get overheated in it and stuff. And I don't know. I just really liked that print. I did get one person that was like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> it's just well, it's so for those, real, like, calm down. Yeah. For those like, that I'll... don't know what we're talking about, the print is like a white base rib knit with like bloody handprints, like all <laughs> drippy, over. Drippy, bloody drippy. Handprints? Yes. Hopefully it's, she has some simple. to show us. There, there it is. Yes. There it is. Oh, it's like a handprint on glass kind of print, right? Right. And then I thought it was yeah. like kind of a cute play because it's like a couple set. So it's like, not that either of us would have bloody hands, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's cute. It's like our hands all over each other. You know what I mean? Uh, I love it. Oh. I love it. When you posted yeah. that, I was like, that, that just fits the vibe. Right? Yeah. It just fits the vibe. Now, speaking of like scary stuff, I know you love scary movies. I know you recently asked me what my favorite scary movie Knowing was. The answer. <laughs> I was like, I don't really watch scary movies, but yeah. I, I think I said, We're what fragile. did I say? We're fragile. I said, so uh, in the tunnel, which is a different kind of terror, I might add. That scared every <laughs> child. <laughs> but you know what? That's my favorite movie of all time. It which is a movie? Good movie. Of all time. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The original is my favorite movie of all time. But the boat scene is the like the creepy scary part where there's like the bug or or something scorpion coming across. It was just creepy music and 
I feel like that's what it would be like to take drugs, which is also a really oh, good way to teach you not to. I'm like, <laughs> acid trips, not for me. <laughs> no, no, thank you. So, so what is your favorite scary movie? Oh, that is so like all time favorite, all time favorite scary movie. Like if you were to say, I am in the mood to watch a scary movie and I want to watch my favorite one and which is the first one you're going to grab? I guess it would be the others because it's more of like a jump scare and it's about like ghosts and stuff like that. And I feel like that is scarier because to me, that's more realistic, you mm-hmm. know? Um, so yeah, so you like it after. I it's a love hate. Yes. <laughs> I'll watch it. And then I have to immediately watch a Disney movie afterwards before I go to bed or else I'm a mess. But yeah. So what's your go-to, what's your go-to Disney movie to like bring you back out of that scary face? Alice in Wonderland. That's kind of a weird, creepy movie that. too. <laughs> you know what mine is? Every time I would try to watch a scary movie with one of my friends or whatever, mine was Little Mermaid. I had to yeah, watch the, a- or Cinderella. Mm-hmm. One of those oh, with that happy cleanser? thoughts. <laughs> it is. It's exactly what it is. It's a palate cleanser. Mm-hmm. I needed it. Ginger Otherwise, our brains. <laughs> I needed it. I needed it. It was so I, I, the last time I tried to watch a scary movie. I think it was like the first Ring movie. I, nope, I can't do the Ring. I like that one. That one was good. It's her movements, the jittery movement. I can't. Uh, I cannot. I think it was. It was a combination of not being able to see her face really, yeah. and also the sounds. And I was in the mm-hmm. theater, and I was with a group of friends, and mm-hmm. I was like, I think this was like back in high school. So it's been a long. Yeah, it was, it's yeah, been almost been twenty years. Mm-hmm. But I'm literally in the theater with my hands over my ears, <laughs> with my eyes closed in the fetal position, with my knees up to my chest the entire, for like two hours. It's terrifying. I mean, I, I okay. was, I was horrified. Yeah. I, I didn't to, watch I have most to ask of it. you a question. Okay. You have two daughters, right? Has yeah. any of your daughters come into your room wearing a nightgown and their hair over their face in the middle of the night asking for you? Because that my mind goes right to the ring when no, Bianca walked into I would my room. Literally kick them in the gut as hard as I could. <laughs> so you have to, it's bad enough when they just walk in and don't say anything, and you can feel yeah. eyes that wake you up, and then they're just standing there like they're creepy enough in silence. Them. I'm like that, or you can hear them in the hallway, and I'm like I literally tense up. I'm like, oh, it's so creepy because I know they're out there. Like, yeah. not like they would ever do anything to me, but it's just a weird psychological thing. I'm like, I can't handle it. <laughs> Oh, I'm so going to you... go straight back to that movie when I when Bianca does those things, especially when she was really <laughs> so, little. I'm like, <laughs> the Ring obviously is like a, a series that you can't get behind. What is there any others that you're like, I can't do it, I can't do it. Um, I would say like the Hills Have Eyes movies. I don't like those because I feel like they go places they don't need to. Like it's a different <laughs> kind of part. I'm like, oh come on, like did you have to do that? Like. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm okay with like gory and scary, but there's just, I feel like, like Saw, I I did the first one and that Mm -hmm. was the end. I couldn't do any more Saw. I do those movies all day long. That's fine. (laughs) Have you seen The Hills Have Eyes? I don't know. Gosh, no. Don't. (laughs) (laughs) The Adams Family. (laughs) I'm more of like a animated Halloween movie kind of person. Yeah. Or, or, you know, Hocus Pocus or those kind yeah. of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I, don't I have so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh-huh. I'm more of the the friendly the Casper the friendly ghost kind of supporter, <laughs> oh. well, which is Ricci, also another on. one of my favorites that is so- that I watch every year. But I have an unhealthy yeah. love for Devin Sawa that I can never actually oh. bring to realization. So mm-hmm. it's also depressing at the same time. <laughs> he was he was the heart he did reply back to a comment of mine on Instagram. Did he really? Because mm-hmm. I fall follow him what and so i commented on something and he replied and i was like oh, i can die now <laughs> fangirl yeah totally my husband's like he didn't age well i'm like you shut your mouth I'm like fine it's perfect he still looks like that little boy in my heart yeah. that's all that matters he was a childhood crush it's a thing poster of him you know like it goes way back <laughs> does your husband like scary movies and stuff too or yeah did he kind of like learn to love it because you love it yeah i i would say he's he liked scary movies but not like to the point that i did um but now he's been force fed that and like true crime so 
Like I get so excited I was gonna when ask he tries you. to talk to me about like a murder case. I'm like, oh my God, you're so excited about it. Finally, you know, because normally, <laughs> ah, what's wrong with you? But like every <laughs> once in a while, he'll watch a documentary with me and then he yeah. gets excited about it. I'm like, yeah. Okay, so I... I don't do the scary movie stuff, but oh. I am hardcore true crime. <laughs> and um, Brett and I, like, typically, like, that's the last thing I see before I go to sleep or, <laughs> or I'll listen to it. I turn it on TV and I'll listen to it. And it doesn't matter if it's, like, a documentary or if it's, like, Criminal Minds mm -hmm. where they're catching yes, serial that. killers. That, yeah. That That's what I fall asleep to. Mm -hmm. And so we love that stuff. And I love those kind of fiction books as well we've talked about books before because i listen to a lot of audiobooks while i sew and mm -hmm. i'm like oh i really liked this one or i like the plot twist in this one or mm -hmm. you know those kind of things because you know they're a little more like i don't know they're not as terrifying to me i think mm -hmm. well i read watching that. those and it's not trying to scare you though. The reason why people are so drawn to true crime and stuff like that is because it subconsciously makes you feel better because it wasn't happening to you. Like mm, these horrible yeah. things have happened, but not to you. So it's like a weird, like it makes you feel safer in a weird way. I don't know. Well, if yeah. I know that Dahmer is dead <laughs> now, I mean, that makes me feel good. Right. <laughs> oh, we, Ashley and I were talking about the Dahmer series. Cause I sent you like, a, I, I sent her this like reel on Instagram. I sent her all the kind of, it can be cutesy, scary. It can be anything. I send her stuff all the time. And um, this was like a pie that someone was making. Uh -huh. And for the cover of the pie, it was like a red filling, like, I don't know, cherry or Maybe probably blackberry or something. Uh -huh. So the filling is red. And then like the pie crust that goes over it, they cut it and shaped it to look like this creepy face. <laughs> and it baked so that the red was kind of coming into the face. And it was like really creepy once it was baked by Senator. I was like, it's creepy but looks delicious at the same time. And she was like, I don't think I could eat that after watching the Dahmer series. Yeah. I'm like, I because that was time, a grace period before well, I can too soon. It looks like too soon. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's that <laughs> series hit different than any other Dahmer it documentary. Did. It was, it was just because he should have been caught so much earlier, oh, right? but he wasn't. And I'm like, there were so no, many red flags. That's the terrifying part, right? Is just yeah. seeing his childhood and some of the details from his childhood. How they went out and like picked up roadkill to dissect it. Right. And that was supposed to be educational. And how his high school teacher was like, sure, if you want to. He asked him if he could take a extra, uh, what was it? <laughs> like, Pig cat. or cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah they were yeah. like dissecting cats in school. He's like, you got an extra one I could take home? <laughs> and practice with no. and i'm like he's like the teacher's like no one's ever asked me that but i guess and i'm like okay red flag red flag like, well and he even says it he wanted help he's like there's something wrong with me yeah and i was like nope we're gonna send you to college i'm like what like no if my mm -hmm. child came to me and was like put you in a stressful situation thing, yeah i would be mm -mm. the some kind of therapist or the police station i don't even know i'd be like listen out of my wheelhouse like there's something wrong <laughs> Yeah, just, I I got through air. part of it. I didn't get through the. I don't think I finished the Dahmer series. Like it got to the point where I was like, I don't know if I, I need to mentally like give myself a break before I pick that one back up again. Yeah, and finish it. It because we're I'm we're really bad about like binging something. Yeah, that is not something you can easily binge. It because you almost need like 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 we said earlier, a palate cleanser. Yeah, you need a break. <laughs> you mm -hmm. do. It was because each episode is a lot. You know what? You know what show um, we're watching right now? And it's new on Hulu. It's called The Patient. Oh, I haven't seen that Have one. you, with Steve Carell? No. It is, it, it, the new episode comes out every Tuesday. If y'all aren't watching this, this is right up your alley. It is where he is, um, Steve Carell is a, uh, he's a professional, like, psychotherapist mm -hmm. and that is his career he's written books about it he's very well known and he still sees patients and he has a new patient that has come and started seeing him and he's not getting anywhere and basically this patient kidnaps him and holds him hostage in the basement of his mother's home who is in on this oh yeah wow. i don't want to give away too much but basically he like kidnapped him to be his full-time therapist to help him stop killing people because he's a serial killer. Wow. That's it Steve is... Carell, like, from The Office? <laughs> yes. That's so yes, weird. It's a whole, but it is so good. It is very twisted. 
it, every episode you think, oh, this episode's not too bad. And then something <laughs> happens. You're like, oh my gosh. Like it, it really, it, I'm mm. glad we only get one a week right now. Mm. You guys have some catching up to do because it's we a don't new have series, Hulu but it is at all. In Canada? No. What? Oh. We don't have Hulu. That's I didn't know that. Yeah, we just got Discovery Plus, so. Mm. I guess well, maybe you one know. Day. <laughs> how how can you not stream Hulu to your phone? It will literally be like you're not in the region. It it knows. You know you're else? so close you're... to the border too. I saw a shirt on a girl in a show that I watch on Hulu, and I was like, I need that. I'm going to take a screenshot and go find something that looks similar. Every time I took a screenshot, it would show, like, everything on the screen but the image of the show. It won't let you take a screenshot of the show. Isn't that Interesting. weird? It was just blacked out. Yeah. I was like, that can't be a thing, but it is. That, I would take a picture of your phone? So I would have to, phone? like, put it on the TV and then take yeah. a picture of it on the TV. I was yeah, like, yeah. how do they know? Like, I just don't know. Yeah, I, I wonder if they're worried about people, like, screen recording. Oh, I think And then posting great. so that people don't have, because so there's like different Canada tiers one. of Hulu. Yeah. Yes. We're very delicate flowers over here, and mm. we can't have everything you guys have. Like, literally, our Netflixes are different. Like, we, you can go That's get weird. the, um, I think it was ExpressVPN or something like that, so that you, mm -hmm. it doesn't know where you live. And, um... And our Netflix looks totally different than your Netflix. Just different shows, different access to things. Mm, I don't know. That's so weird. It's I really... so weird. Like, we're not in a different planet over here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Although I really the organic don't... knits are really good. They're bomb. That's the only thing I can think of that is better. Like, Jumping June and, like, all those fabrics. I just hate paying the shipping. It kills me a little bit on the inside. <laughs> Ashley and I have talked about shipping and getting yeah. fabrics to her, but I've yeah. never heard it. What's who's jumping June? It's just like really, it's organic, uh, knit fabric. And it's like mostly for like little kids, I would say. Um, but it's okay. like more natural, I think. And it's also way more expensive, but it's so nice. Like the quality is really shop? nice. What's that? that? That's a Canadian shop. Yeah, I think so. Oh. <laughs> do you I know guys get overseas, do, okay? Overseas, oh, <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Different country. international, Different country. clearly international. Everyone. Yeah, but you know what I mean. I know it's like out of the country, so you have to pay the extra shipping. I'm pretty sure it's Canadian. Um, hmm. I could be wrong. You might want to edit that out. Yeah, we'll look that up and we'll put that in the description. Also, it's them and like I don't know how to pronounce it. Was well, that might be French. It's was so fabrics or something like that. Okay, and they've got really good organic knits. And then blended top. I, I like their fabric too. You know more Canadian I see fabrics. Than I do. That's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I see fabrics. Is that the one you're talking about? Uh, that one too. Okay. But that one's in the carry, US they though. They all kind of carry the same, uh, mm -hmm. what do you call it? Brands. You know, they carry the same, yeah. whatever you call it. It's like an organic Terry cloth. Yeah. Or uh, not Terry, uh, French Terry. Like I got some from I see fabrics recently that I was going to make into a sweatshirt, which I haven't done yet. Um, but it's like, I literally have all the fabric story of my life. But, I haven't done yet, <laughs> but it's, it's that it's really nice. It's yeah. Like, it's that thicker, organic and it's more natural mm -hmm. products. I think, well, that, and I think the regulations are just more also for everything in other countries. Yeah. So there's that aspect of it too. Mm -hmm. it's well, we have some, we have some fun questions that we're going to kind of jump through and if you don't if there's something you don't want to answer you don't have to we've kind of talked okay. about some of these things already but um we do know that you like to do antiquing mm -hmm. um so when you do go antiquing is there something specific that you're looking for or you just kind of whatever jumps out at you and what is your favorite find that you've ever had when antiquing oh, good. Or, or thrifting or whatever i really like to thrift dishes so like pyrex or any kind of bakeware um wicker like wicker baskets like the flat mm. ones for on my wall um i don't know i guess just anything that kind of stands out though like i won't say no to much of anything <laughs> i like it all what's what's your favorite thing you've ever found that you like this is probably the best find i've ever had um oh that's so hard 
<laughs> it probably would have just been one of the bakeware dishes. I just really like Pyrex. Ah, do like you, the vintage, do you um, like seventies, anything from the seventies. Um, do you look for antique like my, sewing I things? Got mixed, I think I've got like multiple personality disorder or something. So it's like, <laughs> I'm all over the place and I've never fit into like one box. So I'm like, I like the seventies. Mm -hmm. I like horror. I like, you know, I don't know. I'm just like all over the place, which used to drive me nuts, but I'm trying to embrace it. Cause like, you know how some people can have like their closet looks amazing. It's like all one like vibe. I am all over the place, like black and white <laughs> neon, like, you know what I mean? So I just feel like I'm all over the board with everything. I don't ever know. I think that's what makes it fun though. Like, yeah. I never know what to expect from you. Like, you're always like, it's not the same over and over. You know, there's just some people that always sew with like the same color tones or colorways mm -hmm. or whatever. And I'm like, no, she's got like bloody handprint fabric, but then she's got this beautiful plaid in a jacket. Mm -hmm. And then she's wearing neon pink over here. Mm -hmm. And it just, it always works. And I'm like, I don't know how, <laughs> but it works. And I, I I'm glad that it. you're embracing it. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that you're embracing it because it's, it all works. It all mm -hmm. makes it fun and exciting. And that's why I think I'm always like, oh, what is she posting now? What is mm -hmm. she making now? What is she working on now? Like, what's yeah. next? Because it's fun. It's, it's exciting. I'm not, like, getting bored. Well, I do not get bored by your page at all. Like, cohesive <laughs> Instagram pages that just look like they're out of a magazine. I'm like, that can never be me. <laughs> like, no. Even the filters change, you know? So it's mm -hmm. like, I want the emotion or like the feel of a photo to match what I'm wearing. So it's like, yeah, if I want it to be kind of dark and like, you know, I really, I'm obviously drawn to like the darker backgrounds and stuff like that. But then sometimes, especially with like fabric promo, you know, it's really, you have to try and be as true to the fabric as you can to help sell mm -hmm. it. But at the same time, that's my biggest struggle is making it look me, but then also keeping the integrity of the fabric, like the colors. So that's like one of the biggest struggles I have with like, um, fabric promo but yeah fun I get that yeah I get that um so we, we also know that you like plants yes are you would you say you're a crazy plant lady I kind of am although I don't have like a budget for both plants and fabric most of the time so I have to like pick and choose or I'll go find like the 50% off plants in Lowe's that are about to die <laughs> save them you uh save them. I try. sometimes i do but my favorite thing to grow right now is avocado trees because all you have to do is take your pit from your avocado mm -hmm. dampen a paper towel put it in a plastic bag put it in your pantry forget about it for three months and then you have a tree it's amazing <laughs> now i thought i thought avocado trees didn't produce for like years they don't oh. Yeah, definitely. like I mean, I don't have the patience. Plant, for that. It's not going to be like I don't think I'm going to get avocados from it. Uh, I mean, maybe eventually, but I just think it's fun to like be able to grow yeah. something from food you ate. I don't know. Yeah, but, and it's nice for the kids I have, to see it. They like it. I have like my indoor plants mm -hmm. that I've gotten into probably in the last year. I've really gotten into them. Some have not survived the last year. Um, but some have, I've repotted some last weekend and was able to separate some into two different plants, but it was one mm -hmm. and they've grown. So I've separated, um, but I do an outside raised garden as well. And we're about to harvest our sweet potatoes this weekend. And then I think oh, that's, that's cool. the end of our garden for the season, which we've never done sweet potatoes before. So we'll see mm -hmm. how that goes. I tried to like do sweet potatoes. I tried to take my own sweet potato and make my own sweet potato slips. But they just wouldn't because I guess some farmers spray the sweet potatoes so they won't root mm. like in your pantry. So I don't know. I tried, but I got the sweet potato plants from like yeah. Lowe's or Home Depot and I planted them. I just wasn't expecting the vine. Yeah. Like the oh. amount of vine that came off, it took over the rest of the plants yeah. in that bed. And that's like all that's left. And and Did the have them dirt in the, the side? Yeah, we have to pick them up and we don't know yeah, under yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but the the sweet potatoes are like coming up out of the dirt in the flower bed because oh, okay. it's they just yeah. they are there's nowhere else. There's so many. So I'm hoping they're good because sweet potatoes yeah. are like my favorite, especially this Me time too. of year. We'll see. All right. <laughs> so we talked about the pot. We talked about true crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're also an avid reader. We've shared book recommendations and stuff i listen to audiobooks but you like to physically read books and stuff so can yeah. i give us a, does your book reading oh, follow the same kind of genre 
Uh, I'm also very all over the place with my reading. So like, yeah, my mood, sometimes it's, you know, smutty romance. And then <laughs> other times it's murder, true crime. I love true crime books. Um, or like anything magical, you know, like I just read the books, um, for practical magic. Those were really good. Um, and then I like, I like everything though. Like some people only like a certain type of book. I'm just, I like all of them. Cause I feel like especially as a kid, that was my outlet. Mm -hmm. It was like, you can be in the same place, but go so many different places when you have a book, you know, like it just checks you out for life kind of, which is maybe that's not healthy. I don't know, (laughs) but it's my coping mechanism. Um, so, and I think one of my favorite books is, uh, the whistle stop cafe. So that's based on the, um, fried green tomatoes movie. Okay. It's even better. And it's so different than the movie was, but, that was like the only thing that I really remember, like my core memory with my sister and my mom, we would always watch that. And so then I would yell like, to Wanda, which is what she yells when she rams her car in the parking yeah. lot. And I would yell that and run as fast as I could from the hallway and jump onto my mom on the couch. And I would just do it for like hours. I had so much fun. So that's my favorite book. And the movie also with it. I watch, you know, practical magic is probably one of my other movies I watch this time of year. Mm-hmm. It's such a classic. It's so good. Have you ever watched it, Ashley? No, I've never heard of this. The Sandra, <laughs> Sandra, Stop! Sandra, Nicole Sandra Bullock, Nicole Kidman, and they're so young and they're sisters oh. that are witches and they both have different experiences about how they choose to use their magic mm-hmm. and, and how it brings them back together. It's really fun. It's not like, it's, it's kind of I don't want to say creepy. It's not like scary or anything, but there, there is some out of body experiences <laughs> in that movie. Um, but it's fun. And I, we watch it. We I've watched it at least twice so far this season. Um, cool. But yeah, it's a, it's a good, you one. should watch I've never read the books though. The books are really good. Books. There's everything. The, the books are always better for everything. Mm-hmm. This is what everybody always says. Books better, books better. <laughs> well, and if you haven't watched it, read the books first, because for me, the thing that kills it the most is when I have like this mental image of the actors and I can't mm. come up with my own image of what the characters look like. You know, it's like, you can't stop. Like I read Twilight after watching Twilight and I'm like, I can't stop oh, picturing these yeah. people and I yeah. want them to be different, you know? So yeah. yeah. I can't, I'm not a big reader because I don't have a mind's eye, so I can't really imagine anything. So it's kind of like <laughs> a blank page. I'm just reading words. Mm-hmm. So it kind of sucks. So I, that's why I have to watch the movie because reading the book, is just like reading words on a page and there's nothing. There's well, no the joy in reading good, for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm more of a listen to the book. So that's why I like audiobooks because I can't just sit still if i'm sitting still my mind is on full blast Could be so if i can sweater. <laughs> so if i'm sewing it keeps my body busy so that i can actually focus on what i'm listening to in the audiobook mm-hmm. but if i am trying to just sit and relax and read a book like that mm-hmm. I will read the whole chapter and go, I have no idea what I just read. Cause I can tell you everything I just thought about in my entire grocery list. <laughs> See, that's it's the only so bad. That I like wind down and I can just be kind of like present and blank is when I'm reading. And nice. it's like the physical turning of the pages. Like I have to have it. Cause like I try to Kindle, yeah. I've tried audio books and I just, I can't do it. Yeah. It's so funny. The I'm, the, I'm the opposite. <laughs> I think part of that though, for me is like my vision. I, it struggles to follow along from line mm-hmm. to line and I'll read the same line three times. Mm-hmm. So like, mm-hmm. even as a child, I had to have like a ruler or an envelope or a piece of paper to follow oh. line to line in order to be able to s- stay on track with the book. Mm-hmm. But it was just, it just became a hassle. I'm like, this, this isn't fun. <laughs> right. So I like, yeah. I like the audio books mm-hmm. because I can still do something and and it still is relaxing for me to like listen to an audio book. Yeah. But um but yeah, I I do enjoy them. I just it's funny. I I love that we're in a day and age where we can all enjoy books and stories differently. Right. Mm-hmm. You know. That's well, the fun like part. The little cassette tapes we used to get when we were little that you could put into your little cassette player and then you could you didn't have to read you could just listen to the book i'm like so it's like that for adults now (laughs) but it was like you had the book too so you could follow along Mm -hmm. like i we would do that in the car yeah 
uh, like on road trips, we put in the cassette and listened mm-hmm. to the book on tape, book on tape. That was <laughs> and it. had the books. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> Um, not to completely shift gears, but we would love to know how you would describe your style. You said it's kind of all over the place, but how would you say, like, if you had to sum it up in three words, like your style, what would it be? I know that's a hard one. That is super I don't know hard. that I could answer it. I know. Um, I don't even, I don't know. I don't know what it would be. Uh, I hate to use the word emo, but <laughs> Grunge <laughs> boho, I guess, is like I don't know. It's so hard because it's like, are you a little hippie-ish? I am a little hip. Well, and it depends on the day, but you know, like I've got that. Like I do like the hippie clothes, like free people. I love it. Can't afford it, so I try to you know make my own. But it's yeah, and like some days I just like stripes, and other days I like floral. You know, it's really hard. I guess maybe confused should be one of the words. <laughs> I, I love know. that. <laughs> I love, I love the boho. I love, I love kind of like the grunge. I think that like, it kind of fits, but yeah, confused is confused should probably be a power word in there. (laughs) Undecided. So how has that impacted your sewing journey? Like, do you find it and we talked about fabrics, you know, Mm -hmm. you like, like there's so many different types that you're drawn to. But when it comes to choosing a pattern that you're going to sew mm-hmm. for yourself, like, do you struggle with picking a pattern as well? Or are you kind of like, okay, I, this is my jam. It just really, it, the, it comes to life based on the fabric you choose. I think I normally pick the pattern first. It just depends. I use Pinterest a lot. Pinterest is like really good for me because I'm a very visual person and it was like I'm testing a pattern right now and it has color blocking in it and I was like I can't picture how the different colors are going to go so I had to like get a marker out and like kind of draw it and then I was like never mind I'm just gonna have to cut out a bunch of pieces and see how they look like together so um I think Pinterest is a great tool to use for inspiration or even just like if you look at your favorite shops like uh, free people, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I'll look and see what I like. And then I'll mm-hmm. go find something that's similar. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. And kind of tailor it more to me and my aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, I don't know. And that's like the hardest part I think is choosing the fabric sometimes. I don't know. Sometimes the pattern leads, sometimes the fabric leads it just really depends on the project. Well, there's just yeah. too many, so, there's too many selections. Like Olga, you can right. sit there for hours and hours looking through her catalog of, mm-hmm just everything and it's always changing <laughs> oh yeah it, it adds more all the time <laughs> well like she'll yeah. me at like 2 a.m and she's like oh my gosh look at all these fabrics i'm like stop it <laughs> <laughs> you're <laughs> enabling <laughs> me <laughs> i know so ashley we had olga on not too long ago mm-hmm. and it was so much fun and ashley had never ordered from olga because she's in canada and so ordering from the states into canada you can get dinged for you know extra fees and duties mm-hmm. and whatever on top of paying high for shipping into another country. So mm-hmm. we had talked to Olga about it and she has done a lot to help alleviate some of that extra fees and, and pain and everything. And so now Ashley's full in addicted to <laughs> Olga. And I'm like, are you on the live? She's, she's selling these adorable fabrics right now on the live. And they're like marked down to like $5 a yard. Oh. Like you've got to get on. I'm like, Easy. And she's like, you're enabling me. And I'm like, yes, I need, I need the people around me to do what I do. So I don't feel so bad about how much fabric I just bought. Well, that's why you and I, like, uh, before yeah. when I started talking or whatever, mm-hmm. every time I was on a live, I would tag her. Cause I'm like, I'm not going to be the only one on here buying, get over here and you buy two. So we would tag each other. It was really funny. And then, and then she would tag me and then I started uh-huh. showing up and I'm like, so now when I see you or <laughs> Ashley or Diana or Catherine or anybody jump on, I'm like, my people are here. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's nice. And I will well, say I just... you're the reason why I cleaned my sewing room finally. Cause uh-huh. I sent her, cause I think she said her sewing room was a mess and I was yeah, like, no, I know. you don't know no mess. And so I <laughs> sent her a picture of my room and she was like, <laughs> Oh my. Uh, yeah, I couldn't function that way. And she just so- had like boxes in the way. That's not a mess. That's just. Oh, I it is for me. Much. I had <laughs> so much. And I mean, it still isn't great. There's a whole corner over here. But you don't even want to know what I'm looking at. <laughs> I went to my closet that I have in my sewing room and I had 
six or seven boxes from Olga that I had never opened. Like <gasps> some of them were like two <laughs> years old and I was like, I need to do this. I need to just open it. Like, because oh, you should have been alive. Husband, I want to see what's in those and boxes. And I would forget about them. <laughs> You just need to do a mystery box unboxing of something you yes. ordered from Olga, and you'd just be surprised with the rest of us. And yeah. it's all, of course, fabrics from like two years ago, so she may not have those anymore. Right? But still, it was a lot. It was they're like a capsule. time capsule. Yeah, it, <laughs> exactly. I'll just pretend it was intentional. I should have wrapped them and put them under the Christmas tree. That's what I really should have done. And then, you know, like, thanks, honey, for buying me all this. Yeah, no, I have, I've literally done that where I put <laughs> my name on the package and then I'm opening it up at Christmas. And then my husband's like, I didn't buy that for you. And I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> and like, well, just, from Santa. <laughs> just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other holidays life? that you get into besides Halloween? Are oh, you Christmas. a big fan of Christmas? Yeah, I love Christmas. So what are some of the makes that you have planned for the holidays, either for you, your kids, your family? Um, I would normally do like pajamas for the kids for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I try to make them, even if it's just like the pants, because that's real, that's a lot when you think about a shirt and pants times four, mm -hmm. like, you know, I did nighties. So it was like <laughs> so much, but I probably do pajama pants. Um, and then the girls, like I tend to do more for them because like dresses are fun, you know? uh so probably there's more girly fabrics stuff. than boy fabrics too yeah for mm -hmm. sure and the dresses so are that's... actually super quick to sew like when you think about it it's very yeah. great lines and stuff and it goes together really fast so i like doing dresses for them <laughs> so we know that you have tattoos i have a couple myself mine aren't as visible um <laughs> but i would love to ask you about them so how how do you know how many tattoos you have no not You've lost count. Yeah. And then it's like, do you count like, I don't know. It's so hard. Yeah. It's undetermined amount. <laughs> undetermined. <laughs> when did you start? How old were you when you that? first yeah. got, yeah. I was 18 when I got my okay. tattoo. And uh, not that I have anything against religion. I've never been a super religious person, but I got a cross tattooed on me because that just seemed like the right thing. Uh, so that's on the <laughs> that back. That was going to be your first then. <laughs> I was like, I guess that's okay. So it started with a cross. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Do you, now you just got a new one. I did. Yeah. What? So tell everybody what it is and where it is. It's on your knee, right? Yeah. It's, oh, let's see if I can do it without falling. <laughs> oh, well, that's your feet. I oh yeah. I saw that. But it's Frankenstein's bride and she's cut in oh. half. Oh. Um, <laughs> I just thought she was super cute. It's like a little cartoonish version of her. Um, I love it. That hurt right under the knee, but. Oh, I bet. <laughs> so that was going to be one of my other questions is what was the most painful tattoo you had done? Um, it's either the throat or Whoa. my knee pit. I thought the kneecap would be the worst. It's not. Your knee pit is a hundred percent worse. The, behind the knee? Yeah. Hmm. For me, I mean, I only have like two, but my first one was on my ribs mm -hmm. and I thought I was going to come up off that table. I have not touched <laughs> my ribs. <laughs> I will never do another one on my ribs again. Like I was <laughs> shaking. I won't do my feet. Mm -mm. Uh, I want to do my armpits, but I don't know. I've heard that hurts. Really I hear bad. that. I hear that hurts really bad too. <laughs> my, my fiance has like a full sleeve, but like up under... It doesn't go into his armpit, but it's like up under that, like that sensitive side of the skin. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, it, yeah, I hear that hurts. Thing, like with my big leg tattoo, they weren't anywhere near some of the places that were hurting. I'm like, whoa, like, where are you going? Like, that's my bikini line. And it wasn't like, it's just weird the way your body like transfers the nerves. Yeah. 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 Ah, interesting. What's the longest you've sat in a chair for a session? I think it was six or seven hours. Oh my god! <laughs> we did the whole like, just get it done in one, in one session. That was wow. I was questioning all my life choices at the end of <laughs> that too, but I knew because I didn't pay for any of my leg tattoo. I mm. traded sewing for it. So I was about to say, I know that you've <laughs> traded. 
I have to sit through this tattoo because I've earned it, <laughs> like you know. <laughs> but and it was really hard. It was like six or seven sessions, I would say, oh. um, to do like the color and stuff like that. But it was it's one of those things. It's like you have to mentally conquer it, you know. And then you feel like mm-hmm. I don't know. You mm-hmm. feel like you've done something. I'm a glutton yeah. for punishment, apparently. Well, it's but like it's having like, babies, right? Like it's like I'm yeah. gonna do. I'm going to do natural. Yes. Mm-hmm. It is an accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. I did that once. I uh, <laughs> I did it both times. Uh, which is... Not me. I was like, <laughs> no, not no. here for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. I would take a tattoo over childbirth. That's for sure. That's well, just, yeah. yeah. Well, especially for my leg, I would have done childbirth again before I would have done my leg again. But now oh, that wow. you have it... <laughs> Well, now that you have your like yeah i mean that's a worth it huge yeah. beautiful piece of artwork thank you like, that's what's <laughs> cool about tattoos though it's like it, you're, it's art that you wear so it's like mm-hmm. an extension of your your personality and how you choose to express yourself and so i'm curious like when you choose fabrics or you choose patterns that you're going to make for yourself mm-hmm. does your tattoos and placement of where they are affect the types of patterns you choose to sew or you just kind of wear whatever you're comfortable in. And if your tattoos show, they show, you know, and if some do, some don't like, how do you, how does that affect your, your choices and like uh, the garments you choose to make? Well, sometimes it's hard because I feel like my tattoos distract from like the clothing mm-hmm. itself. So I try to be like conscious of that, but then other times, like, especially with my leg, I love my leg. Uh, it's my <laughs> body part now um like if there's a dress that has a slit i modify it so the slit is on. oh yeah you know what Mm -hmm. i mean so Mm -hmm. it's just things like that i try to be mindful of but i mean that are like crop tops i'm like well my stomach tattoos are gonna show but you know whatever so i don't know i just kind of go with it because i don't i think one of the best things about getting older i know only in my 30s but you learn to let go a little bit of caring what other people think to an extent Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i'm like yeah yeah, they might think something of me, but whatever, you know, and I get really good compliments. And then sometimes I get people that say really terrible things, but I know that's their problem. Not That's one of those questions that we were wondering, like, do people treat you differently? Because of because people recognize my leg and they're like, oh, you're the tiger. Cause there's like pictures of it at the tattoo shop and stuff like that. Mm. And I went to a tattoo expo and I entered it. And so it is weird to be recognized for an extremity. Like, <laughs> I just had somebody do it at the reptile show. They were like, were you at the uh, Tucson, you know, expo a couple years ago? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I was there. I was like, cool. Like, a lot of times I just don't know what to say to people. And I feel yeah. like it comes off, like, as me being, like, closed off sometimes. But I'm like, no, I just literally don't know what to say to you. <laughs> like, I'm not trying like, to yeah. I'm just like, I'm okay. the, the, this ink. I'm like, thanks. Or, like, the big tattoo. Yep. Like, yep. what do you think <laughs> of that? You know, like, yeah, it is. You're observant. Yeah. Like, you it, know, it hurt. Yeah, I got it. That was a will. An older man came up. That's a really big tattoo. I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> and he like cornered me with a shopping cart. I was like, I'm gonna go. Thanks, thanks for stating the obvious. I mean, yeah. I live with it every day. Like, it was my choice. But then there's like, yeah. you know, and it's a lot of like older women, and I mean like grandmas that come up to me and they're so sweet and they're just like, that's so beautiful. Like, I wish I would have had the confidence to get a tattoo. Like, you know what I mean? And I feel like yes. they didn't have that opportunity because tattoos weren't taboo, a little more yeah, taboo. taboo for a really long time, especially. Yeah. So I feel like it's really nice in that aspect. It's, um, isn't it because like, if you had a tattoo, you were in prison, like that was usually where you got them. I just think they were initially just thought of as trashy. I don't know if it was yeah. necessarily even prison because it's like, you know, and then there was like the military tattoos that the men had, you know, mm-hmm. so it's like, well, I, don't know. Or, I just feel like it like, wasn't an open area. The war, because like the Auschwitz tattoo and stuff like that. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Marking the mark of the beast. Yeah. It can mm-hmm. go both so <laughs> I yeah, have, I have two. I was telling Ashley this. I have two tattoos um, and they're, like I, I forget that I have them. They're not like super visible to me when I'm looking in the mirror. Um, one is like on my back right here, and the other one's like on my ribs. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have meaning, of course, for me. But I always was like really drawn to getting tattoos. I really like the process of it. I mm-hmm. like 
Like I spent like a year looking at this design before I ever had it put on my skin permanently. So it was like an it wasn't like a, on a whim. It was like a I know I want this. Yeah, and I want to live with this, right? So it's it's a just it's a life decision. But there are definitely tattoos that I want that I have not gotten because of kind of how I was raised of, you know, you don't get tattoos, it's Mm -hmm. your body and, you know, and those kind of things of being in, I think, the Southern Bible Belt that I grew up in. It was very, (laughs) very different. And so it's hard and I still live here. So it's like hard Mm -hmm. for me to get out of the mindset that I was just, that was drilled into me. But at the same time, this other part of me is like, but I want them. And I just, I'm at that point where in my life where I'm almost, I just turned 38, I'm almost 40. And I'm just like, you know what? I should, I should just go get them. I should just go. Cause like, it's not a ton, but I do want like a shoulder half sleeve Mm -hmm. kind of combo thing. And there's definitely some that I want on my arms. There's definitely areas like you mentioned, like that you don't want to get tattoos on. There's definitely areas that I don't that Mm -hmm. are off limits for me. Like my feet are one too. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But, but it's like, you know, I, when am I going to stop caring about what other people mm-hmm. think or, or how I, the, the mindset that I was raised with, right. Mm-hmm. When, when can I choose my own mindset about it? Because I love them. Yeah. My fiance has a whole sleeve and then this other arm and everything too. Um, and they're beautiful and I appreciate them, but now I'm, it just makes me want more. I, it really does. They're super addicting. And that's like the biggest thing I struggle with is like, I don't want to run out of room. But at the same time, I feel like my pain tolerance is less and less the older I get. So I'm like, I need to hurry up and fill up because I don't know oh. how to do this. It hurts so much worse than I remember. Um, yeah. But And the one on the face, did that one hurt? No, that's, and that's the thing. I was like, this is why Post Malone does it. It doesn't uh-huh. hurt. Like, uh, it didn't okay. hurt at all. It was the weirdest thing. I was like, this is amazing. Hmm. Like, I wish I had this for my whole body. Um so I got that one and then I got, I don't think you can see it because of my makeup, but I've got a J right here. Uh, my dad stopped talking to me for <laughs> a couple months after my face tattoo. He was like, you oh. promised you would never tattoo your face. I'm like, that doesn't sound like me at all. <laughs> I don't want to make that promise. Uh, but I think that it's was pretty. Like- it's nice. It's not like crazy. Yeah. Right? It's just like a nice little... Well, I'm like, I makeup on, so it's like not as dark as it can look, but I'm like, you mm-hmm. know, especially because of the way my hair goes, normally you can't really see that much of it anyway. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I know no it's funny you say the face didn't <laughs> hurt because, you know, I got, I got my ears pierced when I was younger, but mm-hmm. like still a teenager. But then in college, my roommate, my freshman year was like, let's go get tattoos. And I was like, I am not getting a tattoo mm-hmm. on a whim because my parents are like, paying for my college and if I came home with a tattoo they would not only stop paying for my college they would disown me like that was just my parents yeah and that was just how that was raised and so I was like I'm not getting a tattoo but I'll get something less permanent and Mm -hmm. I'll get a piercing so I got my eyebrow pierced I think it was gonna hurt right on my face right here got my eyebrow (laughs) pierced I cannot tell you that did not hurt at all that hurt less than getting any of my ear piercings even my cartilage and all of that my dad wouldn't let me it did it, you know what? They still wouldn't let me come home for Christmas that year. Um, <laughs> I had to take it out. I actually ended up losing it in a snowboarding accident just a few mm. months after I had it done. Uh, and I haven't had it since. And you can't even tell anymore. There's like one little dot below my eyebrow. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's funny. It's like that the face did not hurt. No. At all. You would think there would be a lot more nerve endings there. The no. only thing that it was. The nose. I had to sneeze. Mm. That was it. Mm. The nose piercing, that one kills and it makes really? you cry. Oh my God. There's so many nerve endings in your nose. Yeah. I don't remember mm-hmm. nose hurting. I had it done twice. Oh, for, yeah. <laughs> see, a lot of people have said different things, but, and I also had my tongue done back in the old days. Oh, oh you're so brave. <laughs> I could never. Yeah. I had to take it out when I became a mother because my husband was like, you are a grown adult now. <laughs> I kept it as long as I could though. <laughs> right? Yeah. Isn't that was that my funny? thing. I was like, okay, it's either tattoos or piercings. And I'm like, piercings I can take out. Okay, I'll go with that. I'll go down that Well, road. I ask my kids. I'm like, do I embarrass you? Like, because I want to be like aware of how they're feeling without like... Like, I'm never obviously going to take my tattoos off. That would be so expensive and so painful. But I just wonder every once in a while, I'm like, you know, does it bother you? And they're like, no. I'm like, okay, cool. I think it's just because they grew up with me looking like this. So 
it doesn't really phase them. They'll be like, oh, you're getting another tattoo, but I don't <laughs> embarrass them inherently. So that's good. And the baby likes to like, he tries to scratch them off because he doesn't understand <laughs> yet. It's so cute. <laughs> Do any of them express interest in getting tattoos when they get older? The girls for sure. I don't think my son really cares so much. But both my daughters are like, oh, I can't wait to get a unicorn tattoo. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> you well, we'll talk about it. And I've told them, like, listen, when you're ready to get tattooed, all I ask is that you consult me. Like, let yes. me help you, like, choose the design yes. or where you're putting it. Go to the right yeah. artist. Yeah, absolutely. I'm like, just be safe about it. Don't be stupid, you know? So, yeah. Well, I used to go with my friends, like we would go to the tattoo shop and then they would just like look at the wall and then like mm -hmm. one put Eeyore on her lower back. And I can tell you that for sure she regrets it now. Yeah. But, like, or just like, oh, I'm going to put like a, a Chinese symbol. I'm just like, there's no thought. Mm -hmm. Like, this is why you should have, like you said, you need to consult someone yeah. before you yeah. go make a lifelong decision just because you're of age and you're allowed to do it doesn't mean you should yeah <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly that's that was the, when i went with my roommate in college i was like well i'll get something pierced she got the tattoo mm -hmm. and it's a mm -mm. star on her lower back yeah, lower <laughs> yeah. Back tattoos. and that's mm. like her first and maybe one of her only i don't know if she has any more now but i was just like <laughs> that, was the, that was the thing I mean, yeah. Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera had them. So why wouldn't she, you know? And I was like, yeah, no, I'm not. My no. parents would murder me. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I put a fake tattoo on my lower back and I thought I was so cool. And I remember one of like the kids behind me in science class, like they were kind of whispering. And then he came up to me and he's like, dude, did you get a tattoo? I was like, ah, no, like, it, you know, but it was just funny. They were like, ooh. <laughs> She's so funny. <laughs> All right, so I, I have a I have a question for you. We'll kind of shift back to sewing for a second. Um, is so you you've done a lot of different types of sewing. Mm -hmm. You you did the quilting. You've done the baby stuff and the in the kids' clothes and your own clothes and garments. Is there a sewing type or technique that you want to learn that you haven't tried yet that interests you? Um, I feel like. I like the thought of being able to like learn how to drape on a dress form, mm -hmm. but I also feel like that's not for me. Like, I feel like I will lose interest really. Like if I can't catch on to something pretty quick, I give up altogether. I've been like that since I was a kid. Um, but I also really like um, more tailored jackets and stuff. So, mm -hmm. or even bag making, like I don't really do bag making, but um I see so many awesome bags that I really want. I would like yes. to, and I also think about all the things I'd have to acquire to start doing that. Oh, that's, yeah. And I'm just like, I have so much already. Plus I'm learning how to crochet now. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm all over the place all the time. So I mm -hmm. feel like, I don't know, I'm probably pretty good for right now, but if I were to dabble, it would be more structured jackets and stuff like that. And then bags, I think would be interesting. Do your kids show interest in learning to sew when they watch you? Yeah, my girls, what you make. But my son will every once in a while, but they're the ones that mostly are like, hey, like, can we come in and like make a full outfit today? And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's hard for me, though, to let go. It's like when you give your kid a, kid a craft and you like see they're painting outside the lines and you're like, let me do let it. Me just do I, it. I'm just going to do the whole craft now. Okay. Like it's hard for me to let go of control. I think. Mommy can make it better. Mommy yeah. can make it better. <laughs> this is going to live on my fridge. Walk away. It, needs to be, <laughs> it needs to be better if it's going to go on my fridge. Walk yeah. away. But I did pretty fabric. Girls, I don't want you to um, waste it. I let them pick a pattern for the other one. So like Everly picked out a pattern for her sister and then I'm going to have them help me make dresses for each other for Christmas. So uh, that's Aww, fun. That's yeah. Are fun. they, are you making them costumes this year for Halloween? Um, Everly? Yes. She wants to be a devil, of course. So I'm going to make her costume and then journey. I'm going to make him, um, Pinocchio, I think. And I'll make that one. Uh, Georgia wants to be a mermaid. I'm not about that life right now. So I was like, we'll just buy yours at Target. Ah! She likes it. And then my son wants to be something super creepy and I'm not making that. So that was <laughs> most challenging a couple years ago, he wanted to be this thing called, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Nyan cat or something. And it is literally a cat dressed as a pop tart with a rainbow coming out yep. behind it. Mm -hmm. I was like, 
why do you do this? Bounces and the rainbow comes out of it. Yeah. Never, never even heard of it. So I did what I could. It wasn't fantastic, but it was so cute because he was so proud of it. He even went up on stage and did the costume contest. I was like, oh, oh. yeah. But everybody knew what he was. So it was pretty funny. Yeah, it was like, so funny. Last time I sewed for him. <laughs> did you dress up for Halloween a lot as a child? Oh, yeah. What was your favorite costume? Uh, did you, black power were they... Ranger. Power Ranger? <laughs> no. Yeah. Were your costumes as a child store-bought or did someone oh, make them some or did... Mom. Yeah. Nobody in my family has ever been interested in sewing. Uh, Ashley, what about you? Other <laughs> Ashley. I know, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, my, my mom would make one costume and then I wore it like four years in a row. Um, she didn't really make a lot. Like it was more like the plastic apron style costumes with the sharp mask. Either. You know those ones? I remember my sister was a Smurf, and then you would try to like stick your tongue through the little hole that was for your breathing hole, and you would like cut your tongue. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this is the nineties, right? <laughs> Everything killed you back in those days, right? <laughs> Everything yeah. had lead. I, yes, I, exactly. my, oh, mom, definitely my mom made all of my costumes growing up, but my mom was a sewist. Mm -hmm. And so I literally had free reign to be whatever I wanted. Um, mm -hmm. And I loved that. So you said the mermaid costume. My mom made me an, an aerial costume and she mm -hmm. had the nude leotard. And that was my base to my outfit. And then she made the little purple shiny, uh, she, she, seashells seashells sea and she seashells and out like applique them onto the leotard so it looked like there was just two seashells right there there was like no anything else and then the skirt was this really pretty green mermaid scale kind of fabric that came down like a pencil skirt and she had a little slit in it so i could walk but then she made a tail that came up out the side wow and it was stuffed like like a stuffed animal had like cotton in it. So it was shaped like a tail and there was fishing line that kept it curled up. Oh and my God. To like the side of my, like that's, so and cute. I had the red, red wig and everything. And I was obsessed with that costume. <laughs> I was one time I was a bag of jelly beans. So it was just like me wearing, I think probably like a black, like stirrup pants <laughs> with my white kids <laughs> and a black turtleneck or something. And then it was this big clear bag. That had a place for my legs and my arms and the bag would tie at the neck with like a oh big ribbon. God. But inside You're the funny. bag were inside the bag were like individual, like different color balloons uh -huh. and they were stuffed in the bag around my body. So it looked like a bag of jelly, beans. but I had a big bow. Yeah. I mean, my friend Megan and I, we were a, a pair of dice and remember the computer boxes that came um that were like these big computer bought like home computer boxes that mm -hmm. you would get we took those and painted them white with the dice spots you know colors mm -hmm. the the black spots and we had a place for our arms and then it just went over our head and i remember that one was probably the hardest one to wear because you couldn't well, see yeah. where you were going and i would trip over the tree roots and then you would fall <laughs> oh, no. but your arms couldn't come around to catch yourself and it would that box would just like like get you in the throat. <laughs> I was like a creepy troll one time. I made my own mask for a troll with all like the colored hair, and I had um, I had on a t-shirt, and I wasn't allowed to wear a crop top to show my belly button and put a gem on my belly button. Oh no, because that was scandalous. The injustice. So <laughs> I had a t-shirt with the gem on the t-shirt, but then I had like the acid wash jeans with the paint mm -hmm. splatter. I mean, it was oh, like cute. It was like a whole, like every year I was Big Bird. My mom made all of those costumes yeah, and it was so much fun. <laughs> I never that's wanted you, to wear anything. You know I, am. <laughs> I never wanted to wear anything that matched my brother. Oh, no. <laughs> that was not, that was not cool. Not I couldn't do that. Mm -mm. No, I wanted I to do my own do thing. Like a theme, you know, like I wanted to do the Adams family. And oh, that would be cute. Are not about it. I just, oh. what? I know. They need to watch the movies That's again. I you need to drill that into like, them, like Hocus Pocus. I, I was just thinking, I was like, how have I not made, like, Bianca Ash, like, Wednesday, and then <laughs> Jack Huxley? Like, how have I not done that yet? I feel like next year. I'm going to try to push it. But you made direction. her costume this year. You're making her a little witch costume. Yeah, and then Jack oh, is I the army that. guy. That was mm -hmm. cute. 
I'm and trying. I love the I army guy too. To, I should have went to Little, Little Lizard King because the pattern I chose from Ellie and Mac, as you can see, it didn't work out well. I didn't even think because the, the top is gathered for the little corset, but either way, she's gonna have a cape over top, and then I'm gonna attempt to make a witch hat. So we'll see how that. Oh, goes. you're gonna make the hat too. Yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> In yeah. theory. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of I patterns have... for witch hats, so I'll just grab one mm-hmm. of those, hopefully. As long as I have the right stabilizer and, you know, interfacing to keep yeah. it up. Are you dressing up this year? I don't really know. I think the last time I dressed up was like a few years ago and my mother-in-law, she sews, which is really nice. And she made all of us like, we were witches, but we were like forest witches, you know? So we Ooh. were like all black, like kind of... I don't know, almost Victorian looking, like, you know, the morning clothes. Oh, nice. um, we were all in those, like the kids were too. We had like animal pelts, like on our belts and then like crazy face makeup and bones in our hair. Like it was super fun. We won the Interesting. Contest that year. but <laughs> so that's fun. And then she had made my husband's Halloween costumes when he was little. So my daughter, she got to wear his Peter Pan costume. Aww. That was really cute. Um, but that's nice because she does so. So mm-hmm. we have that in common together, but she doesn't do clothing. So like uh knit clothing. So mm-hmm. she'll be like, Hey, I really like that dress. And I'm like, okay. Like, you know, or the sleep set that I made, she wanted one of yeah. those. I made that for her birthday, you know, cause she just doesn't, she hasn't dove into the knit world yet. I keep trying to coax mm-hmm. her, but she hasn't made it. <laughs> it's a, it's a different like, world though. Coming from yeah. cotton to knits. It's just like, mm-hmm. it is be- when, when my mom sewed like all of my clothes or Halloween costumes and stuff like that growing up, it was all wovens. Mm-hmm. And then she, that was an easy transition into quilting when we got too old and too cool for that yeah. stuff. Um, and so that's her kind of beast now is all the quilting <laughs> and everything. But mm-hmm. so I'm doing all this garment and knit stuff. And she's like, I, I don't, I wouldn't, e- I wouldn't even know where to start. <laughs> but you know, so it's just, did, now I think it's easy. Different. Like, I think knits are so much more forgiving than woven. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, for sure. I prefer, I prefer yeah. knits. And it, but I think mm-hmm. you also have to be really comfortable with a serger mm-hmm. and a yeah. lot of people who haven't ever sewn with knits or have done like quilting, like you don't really use sergers. Right. My mom has one, but I think mm-hmm. I've used it hers more than she has. <laughs> so right. mm-hmm. it's just not something that you really use a whole lot like you do with mm-hmm. knits. And I could make a whole, I made this whole shirt without even touching a regular sewing machine. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. just all of my serger. So I think it's, it's a different perspective. Well, and the um, knits with a regular sewing machine are so much more challenging than when you finally jump into the serger, like, Mm-hmm. I was doing it for a long time with my sewing machine. And then I finally saved up enough money to get a serger. And I was like, this changes everything. Like it's so it's much just easier. fun just to be like, woo. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like my yeah. table will start to shake. I'm like, okay, I need to slow down a little bit. Like, <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> I, you know, I have a lot of people that reach out and they're like, okay, I want to get a, you know, start doing garment sewing. I really love all of Olga's fabrics. And I'm like, okay. Well, do you have a serger? No, I just have my sewing machine and I'm like, okay, start with some woven. See, like, yeah. I just I want you to get really comfortable with your sewing machine first, your regular sewing okay. machine, but then graduate to a serger. I get that right. you want to make some really cool stretchy dresses and tops and whatever, and they're really fun, but you're just not going to enjoy the sewing process as much on a regular sewing yeah. machine with this type of fabric. And I don't want people to get discouraged early on in their sewing journey mm-hmm. because then they're mm-hmm. going to quit and no, they're not going to stick with it. Especially you like, know? You, like double brush poly on a regular machine makes me want to cry because yeah. it always jams down, you know, and it doesn't, stuff, and then you, yes, it, out, it does. And, and, and then and, you're going to, and I can something. give you all the right tips mm-hmm. to make it as easy as possible. And it's still going to happen because right. I mm-hmm. use those tips and it will still happen. Like yeah. I can put the walking foot on. I can use the right stretch thread, the stretch stretch stitch. I can give myself more seam allowance. I can Fresh do needle. all these. <laughs> yeah. Different yeah. ballpoint needles. Like I can do all the different settings and things and it will still happen. Yeah. It will mm-hmm. still happen. So what are you is that your little man? Come here. It is. <gasps> Who got you out of the crib? Come here. He was sleeping. Oh, nap time's over. <laughs> Uh, well, let's let him say hi. Hi, bud. Oh, you're clapping for yourself? Because <laughs> he got himself out of the crib, huh? <laughs> Can you say hi? Hi, Journey. Whoa. Huh? Aww. 
I miss having babies. <laughs> oh, he's like, the Mine's so kind of handsome. Eight. Mm. You're easy, huh? He's like, I'm number four. I got to take it easy on her. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> do do your older children just love like having him around and like kind of? My daughter yes no? thinks that he <laughs> is hers, and he thinks <laughs> the same. So they're very close. She takes care of him a lot. Uh -huh. I'm like, stop, I'll do it. And she's like, no, I've got it. I'm like, okay. I'm mom number two for him. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, buddy. <laughs> he wakes up so happy. If y'all haven't seen him and his little Halloween, like his little pumpkin onesie that she made, have to go to her Instagram so and see it because it is the cutest thing. He <laughs> is just the sweetest little boy. <laughs> Are you sweet? You, I'm talking about Are you. He's a ham also. He is. He he's he's cute. so cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, 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 you can wrap up now because your nap time's up. Mommy and... duty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I know that you kind of gave up your sewing time today to talk with us because I know you sew a lot when they're napping and, mm -hmm. and work around being a mom. But thank you so much for coming on and joining us. I really appreciate it. No, thank you for having me and convincing me to do it. <laughs> I know. You were nervous. I was but I was like, girl, this is <laughs> I tell you, every single person that comes on, they're like, I'm so nervous. I'm so scared. And then they get to the end. They're like, so can, can I come back and do this again? This was fun. Yeah. You know, like we get those like at the end, like, oh, this wasn't really that bad at all. This was just hanging out. I'm like, yeah. Well, and it's, <laughs> it's like, it's just, then it's like, I get imposter syndrome really bad. And I'm like, why would they want me to be on? Like, you know what I mean? Cause like, I yeah. know the comparison is the thief of joy, but of course I like, I know how many followers the other people have. And I'm like, Wait, me? Like, are you sure? <laughs> like, there's a difference between like someone who's a lot of followers and mm -hmm. none of them see their stuff, and then yeah. like having a little bit of followers, but those are quality followers that are mm -hmm. engaging with you. Yeah, and it really yeah. is a big difference. Well, and I like, think I the content you put out is more important to me mm -hmm. than how many mm -hmm. people are following you, and I think yeah. you've just consistently been authentically yourself, and it comes across, and it's why I enjoy following you. And I, you know, that's honestly the reason we asked you to join us and, and talk is because you just bring a different perspective and that's what makes this whole podcast fun. We don't want to do mm -hmm. talk to the same kind of people over and over, right. you right. know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's what helps us grow and learn and be inspired by different people in different ways that we would have probably never thought otherwise. So well, that's what's I know you do. Just because it's like I talk to people that I probably normally wouldn't, but it's yeah. like you get to know people like on a different level and you have the commonality of sewing, but you're all so different. And mm -hmm. that's what I really like too. It's just like I think that's what brought you and I together. You and I, I don't even sent each other DMs. We just did. <laughs> I know, I know. And it was just so natural. And I'm like, I just want to get to know her. I want to be her friend. Are you gonna be <laughs> at Olga's uh pop up in April? I'm going to try. It's just hard because next year is also our 10 year anniversary and we want to take a trip for that. And then I want to try and get back to Oregon. Um, but I'm going to try. It just kind of depends on flights and all that stuff too. Well, let me know. Cause I'm going to be there yeah. and I would love to finally meet you in person. I know it would be so fun. Huh. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you guys. Bye. Say thank bye. You. Bye, Journey. <laughs> and of course, anything that we talk about will be in the description box, all the links and everything. So thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.